Welcome to the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Strategies for multifamily real estate investing, mindset, community, success. The Wealth Genius Podcast with your host, the godfather of real estate, Alfonso Quadra, who has expansive experience in business and massive success as a real estate investor. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Let's dive into today's episode. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. My good friend Adriana is here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Last night, I was. I, I saw a clip of us just coming out of COVID, I think. Um, I want to say it was 2020, but I'm not sure. It could have been 2021. You know, a lot has happened since that video, you know. But I send it to you just for, so you see, you know what? I'm watching you, and I wanted you on this podcast because we're having interesting conversations, and you're an interesting person. And uh, not only that, you inspire a lot of people. You're a rock star. So thank you for coming. I appreciate you and that podcast that we recorded together. So many people have reached out to me from that, just saying how incredible that conversation, life changing yeah, it was. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, it was I'm fun. excited to do this again. Yeah. And um, we're going to do it many more times. Yes. <laughs> yes. To that. But, uh, you know, I want people to get a sense of who you are. There's many parts of Adriana. You know, you got your, the business hat, you got the investor hat, you got the mom hat, you got all these hats, right? But kind of, you know, and, and we're talking, we'll talk about real estate as well, but that's not the only thing you do. But um, how did all this get started? Yeah. Um, craziness. I immigrated from Brazil at 13. Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Brasileira <laughs> with uh, a single mom and my sister. The three of us came. It was crazy times, you know? Like, I don't think I've met your sister. Huh? I, have I met your sister? I don't think I can't, so. I can't picture a sister. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, yeah. I, so is she older? She's a bit older, oh, not okay. by a lot, but yeah, a couple of years older than me. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's, that, I need to meet your sister. I, you and your should. mom. <laughs> and my mom. Yeah. She, I'll, I'll bring her over. Yes. Yes. Um, really challenging times. It was really tough. We kind of left everything in Brazil, immigrated here, you know, started from scratch. I didn't speak the language. We didn't really, we came from really humble beginnings. So what gave you guys the idea to come to Canada in the first place? My mom is really ambitious and she really wanted a better life. Like that was all there was to it. She's like, I know there has to be something more. Um, and then just decided to come, and it was a very quick transition coming here. How old were you? I was 13. Wow. Yes. Wow. It's really interesting because you had to learn language. Yes. <laughs> no English whatsoever. Had never seen snow in my life. Came from a really hot spot in Brazil. So yeah. definitely shocking in so many ways, uh, culturally, obviously. And had to really figure it out how to put myself back together and how to create a new identity at the end of the day. Uh, my mom never really, again, humble beginnings, started working very early, first job at 14, out of the house at 18, really taking care of myself very early on. Yeah. And, and um, you had to like adjust to s school and, you know, did you like get a job or like, what did you in end up doing? Yeah, so my first job was at McDonald's at 14, working the overnight shift. So they put you on a rotation when you first started there. You have to take the worst shift ever, which was the overnight. I would go to work and then wake up the next day and go to school. Wow. And like walk to school and take the bus with my sister. Like it was just, just such crazy times looking back now. Uh, but, you know, it gave me that first experience of like working and making my own money. That's what I used to buy my textbooks, my uniform for school, my mm -hmm. shoes, anything that I needed. I took care of it myself. Uh, my mom said, I'll take care of rent. I'll take care of food. Everything else is on you girls. Go work, go make some money and go, you know, pay for yourselves. Nice. And I think it, it, it really created a work ethic in you. Um, I like McDonald's. The, the train it's a good training program in terms of uh, you know getting young people to young people to work my oldest went through McDonald's and uh, and um, 
you know they they're just really they're just really good at getting p young people to work and it's it's kind of like a long lost art um i see a lot of 14 15 year olds are just like they're still playing video games and stuff like that so uh, I can see the work ethic in you that, you know, at 14, 15, you're, you're getting out there and working. So what happened after that? So fast forward to like married life now, a few years later, um, my husband and I got married again, still humble beginnings. He's an immigrant as well. It took us about seven years to save enough money to a down payment for a house mm -hmm. after we paid some school debts. We got a, a townhouse in Mississauga, living there, had two kids, two little ones. Um, my mom went through a mental health crisis at the wow. time and had to move in with us. And for the first time in a long time, I thought, whoa, not only do I have to take care of my little ones here, I have to take care of my mom. I know she doesn't have much for retirement. Um, she's moved in with me. How the heck do people do this? Because we're working regular jobs, you know, making like a 3% increase yeah. a year. I'm like, how do you create wealth that goes beyond, you know, my immediate family, beyond my immediate needs? How do I create wealth that's going to overpour into my family, my mom, and, you know, other people around me? And so you got this crazy idea of real estate or like, <laughs> 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 like, well, like, you know, like, Usually people don't associate, those, you know, <laughs> connect those two, right? Yeah, they, they yeah, people yeah. say, okay, I got to get, get more jobs. Yeah. That's what I see. A lot of uh, immigrant people, you know, and, and obviously I, I come from that background as well. It's like they see, they, they look at, you know, the only answer is getting more jobs, yeah. right? So you got to work, uh, you go to work and then you go to another job. But you said, I want to do this real estate thing. So <laughs> like what happened? Very, very good question because I that was the first time or one of the first times that I had to make such a shift in how I thought. I knew that there was no way, even if I had added another job or I had got job promotions or whatever, that I was going to be able to make enough money to support myself and my mom and my kids. And I thought there has to be another way. People do this differently. There's no way that we can spend another seven years trying to save for another home. So I did start to very intentionally look and become aware, where do I see wealth around me? Who has money around me? Yeah. Not the people that I was hanging out with at the time because yeah. we didn't have much either. Yeah. So not by chance, really intentionally, we started working for a couple that were doing high-end flips in Caledon. Mm. And I went to their home and it was beautiful. So you, you they were doing, uh, so you were working like uh, you're just doing admin stuff or what are we doing? Yeah. So my husband has a construction business, okay. has had it for a long time. He had transitioned from working for somebody to opening his own business around the same time and got hired to work doing town installations for this massive, beautiful home in Caledon. And he said to me, like, you need to come see this house. We had never been in a house like that before. I'm like, I'm coming. I'm coming to take pictures of your work. Like, I'm coming. I got there and I met the lady, the owner, and I started to ask her a lot of questions. I'm like, how, like, tell me more. What's going on here? She's like, yeah, we flip these homes. We move in. We do full renovations. My family lives here. We sell. We do it again. Mm. And we've been able to do five of those. And every time we do it, we get like an even bigger home, an even nicer home. And she was doing, to me at the time, felt like crazy numbers, spending $200,000 on the landscaping alone. Uh, and doing all these crazy things. And I thought, real estate, huh? Mm -hmm. Like, there's something here. I see wealth in real estate. Yeah. So I immediately went home, researched, found an educational program, just like Wealth Genius, mm -hmm. that taught people how to do real estate for investing. Yeah. And I thought, this is, this is where I'm going to get started. Yeah. Now that you got the education and mindset has to change, what did your mom say about it, by the way? I'm curious because <laughs> I, I know what my mom said. I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> I did not tell anybody about yeah. this. Was, they did not know for- Your friends didn't know? Nobody knew. Right, it was Anton right. and my husband so and what I. So what was your concern like in letting people know that you're doing this? They were going to discourage me. They were going to think I was crazy, that I had joined a call, mm -hmm, you know? Like, mm -hmm. all, like I just thought they, nobody was going to understand me. Yeah, and, and so- 
you're you're doing this secret you have this secret <laughs> life <Yes. laughs> moonlighting Literally. real estate moonlighter <laughs> uh and you're still working at the time yes yes yeah. yes and, and what what's your first deal and when was the point where you said i'm doing like i'm i'm going all in here like i'm going to just like go in guns blazing i decided very early on i do make decisions quite fast Uh, when I went to the weekend workshop, mm -hmm. I decided there and then because there was an investment to mm -hmm. join, mm -hmm. you know, and, and get coaching. And I thought we literally scraped every bank account we had. The cost was $15,000. We did not have that. Mm -hmm. We had like $4,000 in the savings account. We had a $7,000 line of credit. We called Anton's dad. Can you lend us some money so we could buy this membership? And once we put the money together, I'm like, this is it. I don't have an yeah. option here. I'm yeah, like, we're burning, we're, the, we're burning the boats. Like, yes. we're not going back. Yeah. I'm literally all in. I'm going to have to make this work. Um, my very first deal, or, or, which I feel like a lot of people started there, we had a townhouse in Mississauga that we converted into a legal duplex. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge in and of itself because it was a townhouse. I had to go to the city about nine times to get through the process of even converting that house into a duplex. And that was our first experience with permits and mm. getting in like rezoned uh, and really getting a tenant in there and becoming landlords for the first time. I know this story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to go to never given up, you know, because I know that's, it wasn't just like you, you did this, you did a conversion that was all like uh, rainbows. I know that um, the city told you no. Many times. <laughs> and so, you know, because a lot of people are, you, you know, let, let's say someone's watching this right now and um, they're trying to make this transition, right? And we're, everywhere they go, it just seems like no one is, uh, you know, interest rates are high or um, there's not enough properties or where they live, it's too expensive or all of the obstacles that everyone's going to face. I come from the belief that, you know, sometimes... Uh, you're tested to see if, because you said, I'm in, right? You invested in yourself and you said, I'm all in, but are you really, right? And so people are tested and I want to see what, like what was inside you that kept you going, right? So first of all, tell that story. What happened? You went to the city and they, they, they didn't give you the permit. So it started with calling the designer to get the drawings going for us. He came to visit the house and he walked in and he's like, nope, you can't, you can't like do a, a secondary unit here. And my favorite saying, and I still use today is why not? Mm. I'm like immediately challenged him. He's like, well, you don't have a separate entrance. I'm like, how about if the entrance is over here? Okay, let me look downstairs. There's not enough windows. There's a, I'm like, what about if we move this over here and why not do it this way? And slowly by asking questions, he's like, okay, that's fine. I'll mm. produce the drawings, but I don't think the city is going to approve. Wow. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Get me those drawings. Let me get to the next step. When I had the drawings, we submitted to the city. They got a notice saying like, this is not acceptable. I took notes of what they had said, booked a meeting and went to the city hall. Never been there before. And I'm like, I love to talk to somebody here and find out what's going on and why it's not. And that was the same question. Why not? One of the things they brought up was the parking issue. It was now, it's going to be a two-family home, but we only had one parking. And I said, okay, can you show me in the bylaw where it says that it's not allowed? He opens the bylaw and it says there that the year that that, is, uh, that started to be in effect, and my house had been grandfathered in. Wow. If I hadn't asked him to even mm. show me where that was, we wouldn't have come down to that. He noticed it himself when he was reading it. Successful people ask the, the right questions. This is where they get yeah. the right answers, right? So you were asking the right questions. Why not? Why not? And not taking no for an answer too. I still, I still implement this in my business daily because at the end of the day, We face challenges every day. There's always something, you know me really well, you know the things that happen in my business. And there's always a way, there's always a solution, there's always a best case scenario. And it's easy to get boggled down and you know terrified and paralyzed by the hardships. And that's really not where my focus I want. And sometimes I go there, sometimes mm -hmm. I take a moment to be like, okay, 
But then I like need to come back up to a place where I see and I'm aware of the solutions of the of the right strategies to get me to the place that I want to go. Sometimes a person in front of you has had a long day, mm -hmm. has had a long career, and it, it gets to the point where they just don't want to think anymore, right? And it's easier to say it's not possible and to shoo you away than for you to come and start pointing things out. But what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? Right? It's like you're someone's worst nightmare. <laughs> right but we're not taught that as kids. You know, um, my mom always told me, Alfonso, shh, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, I was a, a curious kid. You know, I, like if I'm at the doctor's office, I'm asking a hundred questions. And my mom's like, no, 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 don't ask questions. You know, like... We're supposed to, if someone's in a, in a position of authority, we're not supposed to ask, right? We're supposed to just take whatever they have to say, you know? And um, if more people had that attitude, then you would get a lot more things done, right? And it, it's not because people don't want to give you the answers. It's because they're human beings. Human beings try to take the path of least resistance. And if it means that we have to do this, change things around, It's not possible, honey. It's not possible, <laughs> right? Until someone question, yes. you know, que yes. question, and that, yes. that's a that's a great uh, habit to to build, you know, to question things. It, it's so valuable. So then what? So we had nine meetings with this person, and you said they must have not liked me. I have a way about me that is very friendly and mm. nice and positive. You good melted energy. their hearts. <laughs> I always do. This is yeah. my conflict resolution 101. Okay? Yes, like yes. I really appeal to... Because I love people and I'm not there to disrespect anybody. I'm not there to be confrontational. I'm there to literally like ask the questions, explain yeah. why it's important to me. Uh, and, you know get to their like human side too because yeah. like you said they're humans yeah so i think that really works to my advantage in a lot of lot of business situations and we really uh eventually he said okay this is it i've gone through everything we've revised everything we checked the bylaw and we are approving your duplex conversion <laughs> no but think about it before that how many times could you have Like said, okay, I'm done. I'm. Maybe. This is not going to work, yeah. right? Yeah. You asked the question earlier, like, what was it in you uh, that made you keep going? And my desire to experience a different reality was so great. And I just, I could see that there was, a, like, I, I just was so visible to me. I became so aware that there was something else and there was a different reality that I just knew I was going to, I had to get there. And I didn't know how. But I knew like there was something there and I just had to keep moving forward until, you know, I got there. It's like if you're going from uh, here to Kingston and it's the middle of the night and all you have is the lights that are in front of you, um, you have to trust that, you know, if you take the 401, eventually you're going to get there, right? But you don't know if there's going to be deers jumping in the, in, in the way. You don't know if there's going to be a traffic jam. You don't know any of that. You just have to trust that you're going to, You just, all you can do is just, you can only see the, the, you know, whatever, how many feet in front of you. Have faith. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And so now you, this is your first deal. Yes. Uh, hardly anything to retire from. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. Yes. But uh, you accomplished, first of all, you learned that number one, you're not taking no for an answer. And uh, number, number two, you now have one more door than you had before. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it gave us our start. Yeah. As little as that was, it gave us our start. Let that's out of that house. We were able to, we ended up selling it after a certain time. And that was our initial capital from the, those two units. We grew to 20 units. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and so at what point did you say to yourself, I'm good at this? Like this is, you said at the very beginning, but you still didn't know what was in front of you. But now there's got to be a point where you just like kind of, you know, wake up one day and you're like, I'm leaning into this big time. Like this is, <laughs> this is who I am. I like to think that I really take one day at a time and prioritize progress and prioritize the journey in so many ways. Cause I didn't know, I still don't know fully 
what's going to happen next, but I have so much confidence and trust. I think everything that I've been through from really early on until now gave me so much confidence that one, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. Two, I can do this. I can figure things out. I have so much confidence in my ability to intuitively know what's best for me and what's best for the people around me because that's huge motivation for me. I look at the people around me and I'm like, how can I serve you? That gives me so much motivation to keep going and grow myself. Yeah. My kids now are huge motivation. And my main concept is how do I be the example? Mm. I can sit here and talk to you about like doing your homework or eating healthy or doing all these things, or I can go be it and be that example that you need to see and, you know, speak from a place of like knowing inside of me. Uh, how old are the, your kids right now? They're eight and 10. What type of conversations are you having at home? I'm assuming you didn't have these kind of conversations when you were when you were a kid. <laughs> no. But uh, you said eight, 10 and eight? Yes. Yeah, so 10 and eight is a ripe age. I mean, they're, the minds are just, they're just being molded. You're, you're now molding these minds. So what do you, what kind of games are you playing? Do you talk about money? Do you don't talk about money? Uh, are you showing them what you're doing? Like what, what what's going on at home? Yeah, so it's so interesting with kids because they'll have, you don't always notice that they're watching you mm. until they come out and tell you things and you're like, oh my God, this is like my mirror. Like mm -hmm. definitely a reflection of me talking back to me. Um, I I sent my kids over for a sleepover last year to a friend's house and they got back and, and when my the friends were dropping them back, the comment they made was, your kids talk a lot about money. <laughs> and I thought, okay, that's interesting comments. I'm like, I don't like, it felt a little judgmental in nature, the comments. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't know what else to say. We're business owners. Yeah. We are we have investors. My daughter, really small, used to get her play phone and be like, I'm talking to my investors on the phone, you know? Cute. Because that's so cute. <laughs> isn't that amazing? So she's an investor with us. I She learned the concept of private lending last summer. And he rocked her world. She heard me talking to somebody about private lending, asked about it, I explained, and she said, hold on. So you're saying that if I give you my birthday money, I can go chill in my room and I'm making money every month? And there's just like this interest coming. <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes, that's kind of how it works. You need to do your due diligence and stuff. <laughs> Got her a contract. She signed. I explained it to her. Every 15th of every month, she's like, is my interest here yet? Wow. She remember. <laughs> I never remind her. She comes right up to me. Well, how much was my interest again? I want to reinvest. Wow. You can put it right back in there. Just want to make more money. Yeah. It's, it's so funny because, you know, this didn't exist uh, in my household, right? But you're in, con you're in control. You're, you're actually in control of breaking cycles. And... Um, the the more that you the, the the more that this becomes normalized, the easier is going to be for them in, in the future because they just we came with the stigma, but they don't they don't need that stigma you know they don't have that stigma. There's such a powerful lesson in here that you don't have to live your life by simply observing your current reality. In fact, I try to spend so much of my time doing the opposite and really imagining building living a future that I want to have. And what is the what does the present look like for you? Like, what do you got going on? You got uh, buildings, you got uh, companies, construction. Uh, what else? <laughs> what else what you, give us a scope of, of, so we saw where you, where you came from, but give yes. us a scope of where you're at right now. Yeah, amazing. So I own an asset management company now. We have about 160 units that Woo! we... <laughs> That we have under management. Mm. Uh, we have a development project that we're also applying to develop 72 units, uh, multifamily apartment buildings. Uh, we have a few construction projects on the go as well. Uh, I co-own the construction company with my husband. It's really his baby. It's his day to day. Uh, and I'm there to support in any yeah. way that I can. Um and I have also a virtual agency. So it's just a staffing, not just, it's a staffing agency that helps mid to small size businesses with anything back end because I needed all the help as I was building my businesses. And I thought, how do I, you know, offer the services to other people? We all need it. So I've done lots of these interviews and 
common theme. Everyone says the bookkeeping killed me. <laughs> the bookkeeping killed me. The book. So uh, save us from the bookkeeping. Like yes. what, what? What's going on? What? What? It's how our, have you solved this problem so for funny. us? <laughs> this is our most on-demand service yeah. of everything. I actually had a, a meeting with the bookkeeping team today. Um, honestly, I felt the same in conversations with investors. First of all, I saw the struggles myself. I'm like, I need so much done for my company. We run a finance company here. Yeah. I'm like, who's dealing with all the numbers? Who's making all the payments? Who's keeping spreadsheets and paying investors and doing T5s and like, you know, accounting? And how do I receive the data in a way that will allow me to make decisions in my business? Yeah, you can give me a profit and loss statement. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And maybe to the accountant, that's really interesting. And I'll look at it once in a while. But that's not really giving me the information that I need. How do you get my books and provide me information around like, what's my vacancy rate this month? What's my repairs and maintenance budget? Is there any bill that's gone above and beyond? No one's tracking that. So I'm like, how do I create a system that once a month I'll meet with my financial partners, we'll go over our finances for our buildings, and I'm able to have real lifetime information that matters and allows me to make decisions uh, about my businesses. So... Um, there was a problem that you had. Yes. <laughs> you, you you were looking for a solution. It didn't exist. So you created the solutions and uh, the solution and you thought, hey, everyone else could have this the, 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 these same results. I, I love it. I love it. Never take no for an answer. You know, if you see a problem, make a company out of it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, Isn't that the whole yeah. point of business? Yes, yes, is no, to I really solve problems. Yes, yeah. no, I, I, you look like, it looks like you're having a, an amazing time. So what's next? Yeah, so I feel really called to share my message more. I really feel called to, I've come from a background, I was a pastor mm. for a few years in my life. Oh my God, I can't <laughs> believe how how long we've known each other and I'm just learning about this. What's wrong with you? You have never shared that with me. I've only recently started to share about this wow. more. You, I you, know, you, I know. And this is how you share it? Like, I, I didn't, know. I didn't know, I didn't know. That's amazing, that's I know. amazing. I know. That's amazing. Yeah. And so. You, this need to to share, um, you know, and and help other people. I, it's yes. and you have helped a lot of people, and uh, not only have you received uh, messages uh, from our last, um, you know, conversation that we had uh, on my YouTube channel, but uh, I as well, you know. And every time I talk up uh, talk about you, everyone's like, "Oh, she's so inspiring. I want to be like Adriana." So you know, um, that's amazing, and. You, you should be proud of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. And that's really where I find that my mission is, my purpose is. Um, and whenever I'm talking to somebody and they say to me, hey, we talked last year and out of that conversation, a shift happened in my life or I made this decision about my business or I learned something or I went ahead and got that property, that Nothing else beats that feeling for me of being able to, in one conversation, through telling my story, through telling the things that I've learned in my life, that can shift and change somebody's reality mm -hmm. forever and the yeah. direction they're going with their lives for the better. And I'm like, this is this is really my purpose. I love it so much. I want to continue this conversation, but uh, you know, the time is up. But this is what I'm going to say: we're going to continue. We're going to do often. And I, I know that uh, you bring so much value. What do you live by? What inspires you? Yeah, I'd say live your dream reality today. Mm. Uh, so many people wait, you know. When the interest rates come down, <laughs> then I'll take a vacation. And then it's like, when this happens, then I'll do that, you know. But um, yeah, I live it right now. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. I love you to death. And um, you've inspired our people. Alfonso loves you. We'll see you at the top. Let's go. <laughs> That's it. Woo! Thanks for listening to the Wealth Genius Podcast. If you have a question or comment about something you heard today, reach out to The Godfather via social media or email him anytime. All that information is in the show notes. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode of the Wealth Genius Podcast. The Wealth Genius Podcast. Until next time, see you at the top.